We just started talking about the second important thing that DNA does. Uh, DNA holds all of the instructions for how to build proteins. You know, the reason that you've got brown hair or black hair or red hair or blonde hair is because of the proteins that you make. The reason that you're tall or short because of the proteins that you make. And all of that is stored in your chromosomes in the form of genes. Each individual gene is basically a little instruction for how to build a protein. So here we've got all of the instructions that are inside of the nucleus. And that stuff is really, really important. So that stuff is kind of like, well, let's imagine that this is the architect who's in charge of building like a massive high rise complex in downtown LA. And uh, these blueprints took forever to make, took forever to get them through the city building permit process, right? And here comes little Mr. Ribosome and he's like, hey, where do you want me to put up a wall today, right? Well, the architect does not hand Mr. Ribosome uh, the whole set of blueprints. He's gonna get hamburger stuff on it, or he's gonna lose them or something like that. So what the architect does is just make, just make a little Xerox of the work that the ribosome needs to do that day. Um, and the architect doesn't care if the ribosome loses that. As a matter of fact, the ribosome is supposed to throw it out at the end of the day because these are just the ribosome's instructions for right now. And when that, those instructions expire, he's going to get a new set of instructions. So making the messenger RNA is like Xeroxing just one little part of this huge stack of building plans. And that little Xerox part, it is a complement of one small area of uh, DNA, just kind of like one gene. So when the nucleus makes messenger RNA, that is called transcription. And transcription is the first part of a two-step process. The second, second step is going to be translation. What is translation? To be very brief about it, translation is building a protein. Translation will require the ribosome, which is made out of ribosomal RNA, messenger RNA, and a third type of RNA. This second step in the two-step process does actually not require DNA anymore. Once DNA has made the messenger RNA, DNA can go back to, I don't know, binge watching something or whatever and let the ribosome go to work. Let's talk more about translation. Translation is called translation because DNA is in code, right? G, A, T, and C, it's all in those codons. Uh, RNA is still in code, uh, G, A, U, and C, right? But it's still in those three letter codons. It's still in code. The ribosome's job is to translate the code and read, oh, uh, U, U, A, that means I need to put a leucine there. Right? He needs to translate it. And as he translates it, he is going to build a protein. And as I said, the translation step, building the protein, requires three types of RNA. Mr. Ribosome, he's made out of, see that little lowercase r? That stands for ribosome. Ribosomal RNA, along with protein. Don't forget the protein, because proteins do everything. Ribosomal RNA and protein build Mr. Ribosome. Messenger RNA, we know what that is. That's like the little Xeroxed paper that gets sent out from the nucleus. And then transfer RNA. Transfer RNA, what is it? Now, this is an example of just a transfer RNA. As a transfer RNA, it is still single-stranded because RNA is single-stranded. But see right here, that right there, that represents a nucleotide and those little thin lines that are coming towards the center, those are nitrogenous bases. So even though transfer RNA is single-stranded, it has shape. And the shape of transfer RNAs is kind of like a weird three-leaf clover. Now down here at the bottom, that is an area called the anticodon. Hmm. Why do we have anticodons? Well, remember what codons are. Codons are three-letter code words Actually, there are three nucleotide segments that are part of a long chain. So the long chain could be C, 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 
U, U, A, G, C, G, right? And this would be the codon. And it turns out that U, U, A is the codon for put a leucine here. Now this particular transfer RNA is carrying a leucine. Sorry. <laughs> Let me get me out of the way. Okay, he's carrying a leucine and there. Um, and so what is his anticodon going to read? Well, he's carrying a leucine, UUA means put a leucine here. So his anticodon, let me change the color of my pen. The anticodon is going to be AAU. So this right down here will be AAU. Now it's called an anticodon, not a codon, because a codon is a code word in a recipe. This is not a code word in a recipe. It simply is the complement of one of those code words. Let's see if we can watch it happening in my next animation, All right? First time I tried to do this video, um, I didn't realize that the sound would not convey onto the video. So I'm gonna have to talk over it. All right, here we start with DNA, right? The DNA is going to have one little tiny segment transcribed. It's going to make messenger RNA. And the point of making messenger RNA, here's our messenger RNA. The point of making messenger RNA is, let me just stop this for a second. The point of making messenger RNA is so we can make a protein. So what is this guy here? This guy here in purple, that is a ribosome. Ribosomes are made out of ribosomal RNA and protein. And they've got these different sites. I'm not asking you to know the specific names of the different sites, so we can just enjoy that part of it. Now coming up here on our right in green, that is the messenger RNA. The messenger RNA is the recipe that our ribosome needs to read. Here is one code word. Maybe that's the code word for methionine. Maybe this one is for leucine. Each one of these is a code on, a little code word for one of the amino acids. So the ribosome says, hey, I need a transfer RNA, oops. I need a transfer RNA whose anticodon matches this codon. The ribosomes are not like completely brilliant or anything. They actually don't directly translate the messenger RNA. This ribosome does not actually know what this particular, does not actually know what this particular codon means. It just knows that it needs to call in the transfer RNA. All of this is a transfer RNA that, that, and that, those are the three nucleotides of the anticodon. And this ball here at the end of the transfer RNA, that's an amino acid. So if, if this anticodon matches that codon, then it'll click into place. And then since this transfer RNA with this anticodon is always carrying the proper amino acid for that codon, the ribosome knows that that is the right amino acid to get things going, right? So then the ribosome is going to attract the next, and the next transfer RNA, and now we've got a second amino acid. Here's what the anti, here's what the ribosome is going to do. Oops, oh no. Here's what the ribosome is going to do. The ribosome is going to take that first ball the first ball and attach it to the second ball, right? They're not balls. This is an amino acid. That's an amino acid. The ribosome is going to stick them together. Remember how I told you that proteins are kind of built like beads on a necklace? So the ribosome has taken the first bead and is attaching it to the second bead. And once the first amino acid is attached to the second amino acid, now that first transfer RNA, it can actually fly away and it'll fly away, it'll go pick up another amino acid and it may come back later on. Remember, every transfer RNA 
is carrying the amino acid that its anti-codon matches that amino acid's codon. Now our protein is three amino acids long. Now it's four amino acids long. Now it's five, okay? The ribosome is just going to keep bringing in the proper transfer RNAs and the transfer RNA, its anti-codon matches the codon on the messenger RNA. So the ribosome doesn't even know what protein it's building, but it, all it has to know is the rules of complementarity and it will always build the protein completely accurately, okay? So that is translation. DNA transcription makes one gene out of the whole chromosome. It just takes one gene and makes an RNA complement, and that RNA complement is called messenger RNA. The messenger RNA gets sent out through the nucleus through a little hole called the nuclear pore, and it goes to a ribosome. And the ribosome is going to tran do translation. The ribosome takes a messenger RNA template, that's the instructions, the ribosome reads it, and with the help of transfer RNAs bringing amino acids one at a time to the growing protein chain, it is going to build a new protein, okay? Now, I told you, you don't need to know the names of any of the amino acids, but you do need to know how to run this particular chart, right? It's gonna take me a little bit of time to go through it, so I'm going to do this at the next um, video.